This video will show you how to calculate the coarsening rate and interfacial energy using the property model calculator in the graphical mode of ThermoCalc. In this example, we're interested in finding the coarsening rate of the carbide M23C6. The example uses demo databases, so anyone with a license for ThermoCalc can perform the calculation. However, it cannot be performed with the free educational package because it uses more than three elements. The calculation is based on the property model example general O2 of the examples included in your software. The example used to be called example T11, but has been renamed to clarify that it uses the property model calculator. You can access the example in the help menu, examples files, property models, general. If you are using an older version of ThermoCalc, it is located in the ThermoCalc folder and is called T11. To begin, select the one-axis equilibrium template from the home screen of ThermoCalc. This template used to be called Property Diagram, so if you have ThermoCalc 2019A or older, click on the Property Diagram template. The calculations will be the same, only the name has changed. We want to make a one-axis calculation first so that we can get a good starting temperature for our property model calculator. From the Databases Package drop-down menu, select the Demo Steels and FE Alloys Package. This is a free demo package, so you should have it in your menu. This loads both a thermodynamic and a kinetic database, which are both needed in the coarsening model. Next, we'll set our composition. If you already have your material saved from the previous video, click Load Material and select the Foretic file. If not, select the elements iron, nickel, carbon, manganese, and chromium. Next, we'll set the composition. Iron is dependent, so we'll let that set automatically. Nickel is 1.4, carbon is 0.08, manganese is 1, and chromium is 17. This sets iron to 80.52. Now we need to configure our calculation, so select the Equilibrium Calculator node. Change the temperature unit to Celsius. We'll use the default values for temperature, pressure, and system size, so make sure your values match mine. Notice that the composition we set in the System Definer auto-populated here. Under Axis Definitions, set the quantity as temperature, the minimum to 400, and the maximum to 2000 to give us a nice view of the plot. Our calculation is now configured, so select Perform Tree at the bottom center of the program. Once the calculation is complete, a plot will appear in the Results pane. M23C6 is represented here by the purple line at the bottom of the plot. I'll drag my mouse over the plot around 650 degrees so we can see it better. When I hover my mouse over M23C6, we can see that it is only a small amount of the phase. We can see that at this temperature, there is only one other phase present, BCCA2. So we'll use that in the property model calculator. When I hover my mouse over it, we can see that it is a large amount of the phase at this temperature. We're now done with the one axis calculation, so right click on the system definer, hover over create new successor, and select property model calculator. We're doing a coarsening rate calculation, so check the box next to the coarsening model. A pane will appear where we can define our conditions. If you click on the Description tab, you can learn about the model and how to set it up. In ThermoCalc's Property Model Calculator, when you use the coarsening model, it will automatically calculate interfacial energy, so we do not need to select that model. Change the temperature unit to Celsius and set the temperature to 650 degrees. Notice that the composition we set in the System Definer auto-populates here as well. Under the Configuration tab, Set the matrix phase to BCCA2 because it was the other phase present at 650 degrees. Set the precipitate phase to M23C6 because that is the carbide we are looking for. Next, we need to select our calculation type. 
We recommend that when using the property model calculator, you always run a single calculation first to make sure the calculation is valid. So select Single, then select Perform. The calculation will run in the event log. When it is done, the last line of the event log will say, the sub-process completed normally. If the calculation worked, you will see the coarsening rate and interfacial energy. If the calculation failed, it will say NAN, which means not a number. If this happens, check your configurations for errors or try different starting values. We got two numbers, a coarsening rate of approximately 2.4 to the negative 28 and interfacial energy of approximately 0 0.263. So we know that the calculation was successful and we can move on to a more complicated calculation. Note that results may vary slightly with different versions of the software. Select the grid calculation type. Set the grid definitions to mass percent chromium and mass percent carbon. For chromium, we'll set the minimum to 16, the maximum to 19, and the number of steps to 20. For carbon, we'll set the minimum to 0.06, the maximum to 1.2, and the number of steps to 20. Lastly, we need to add a plot render. So right-click the Property Model Calculator node, hover over Create New Successor, and select Plot Render. Set the Z-axis variable to Coarsening Rate Coefficient, then click Perform at the bottom center of the program. Once the calculation is complete, your plot will appear in the results pane. The default plot is a contour plot, where you can see how the coarsening rate varies as chromium and carbon vary. You can see the values of the coarsening rate on each line. You can also visualize the data as a heat map by clicking the Plot Type drop-down menu and selecting Heat Map, then clicking Perform again. The color scale on the right gives you the value, and in this plot, red is high values and blue is low values. Finally, you can visualize your results as a 3D plot if you have Thermocalc 2017B or newer. From the Plot Type drop-down menu, select 3D, then select Perform again. Click the plot and move your mouse to rotate the image, giving you a full view of the results. Or double-click on the plot to rotate the image automatically. Lastly, we want to overlay a second plot on top of this one. This is done by clicking the green plus sign under the axis group to add another axis group. We want to see the interfacial energy, so select that from the axis variable drop-down menu. You can enable and disable axis groups by checking the box at the bottom of each group. For instance, we could disable the first axis group if we only wanted to see interfacial energy. We also want to see the coarsening rate, so we'll leave that box checked. Finally, the overlay only works with a contour plot, so we'll change the plot type back to Contour, then select Perform again. Here we can see the coarsening rate coefficient represented by the blue lines and the interfacial energy represented by the red lines. To learn more about the Property Model Calculator, view the other examples videos we have available at thermocalc.com in the Video Tutorials section. If you have an idea for a video, leave us a comment below. We're constantly making new videos and would love to know what topics you would like us to cover.